Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video I will try to explain the differences and similarities of two nobility classes in Russia, boyars and dvorians. Beginning with the late 10th century, chronicles used the word boyar along with several others when referring to the leading counselors of the ruling princes in Russia. What the word boyar originally meant is not entirely clear. Philologically, it may mean a warrior or one who takes responsibility for something. In later times, the boyars were a warrior elite who assisted the prince in governing his realm. The ruler consulted the members of Boyar Duma on a wide variety of important matters of the state. On many occasions in the 17th century, they collectively heard judicial appeals advise the staff of the bureaucratic chanceries on the handling of difficult cases and consulted with the Tsar on important questions of domestic policy and foreign affairs. As a social group, the boyars consisted of two elements. First came the princes, the descendants of numerous branches of the Russian ruling house, the Rurikovici, and the Lithuanian dynasty of Gedemin. All bore the title of prince, which allows sons inherited from their father and all had once ruled their own small principalities somewhere in the plains and forests of northern eastern Europe. The second element in the boyar group was non-titled families who achieved power and social prominence by serving the princes of Moscow of several generations. The great non-titled aristocratic families rose to prominence in the 14th-15th centuries by serving in the army and administration. Occupying high positions from generation to generation gave them the influence, social standing, and the style of life that made them aristocrats. The vast majority belonged to high nobility, whose primary obligations were serving in the army. The others were the chancery officials. They were the outstanding representatives of the growing army of specialists in bureaucratic techniques. By the 17th century, chancery officials were tending to become a heredity elite, like the aristocracy. The relationship between these two groups within the ruling elite was complex. The line that separated them became less and less distinct as the 17th century passed. The decline of boyars started in the 16th century with new reforms of the Tsar Ivan III. Ivan III and his successors developed the Pamesti system of conditional land tenure, precisely to create a large group of noble cavalrymen. In contrast to Vochina that belonged to royal boyars, Pamestia or land was given by Grand Duke to people who served him. Land could be given for a lifetime or for a time of service. If old boyars were similar to European vassals according to their status, the new servitors were dependent on Grand Duke. He could take away their lands if they would get into the conflict. Between 1565 and 1572, several waves of terror claimed thousands of victims. Many boyars died at the hands of Ivan IV's executioners. Peter the Great destroyed boyars as a class. In 1714, his decree on uniform inheritance made Wojna and Pamestia equal. The ownership became inherited, but it was prohibited to divide or sell the land. As only one son could get the land, other sons had to serve the Tsar as officers or bureaucrats to survive. Dvorians as a class started to ferment in the 12th century. In the beginning, Dvorians served to boyars or directly to prince, receiving land as their payment. Dvorian title was not inherited and they could not rule on their lands. But during Peter the Great ruling, Dvorian title became inherited and they could choose between military or government career. Dvorians were similar to knighthood class in Europe of the 12th-13th centuries. In sum, Russian nobility developed in a manner as European countries did. But while the vassality period in Europe was between 9 and 13 centuries, the prosperity of Russian boyars came between 12 and 15 centuries. 
European knighthood was a strong power in 12th 13th centuries, while Russian dvoran's power peaked in the 18th century. Why do you think Russian social development was so slow in comparison to European countries? Let me know what you think in comments below. Thank you for watching my videos and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!